I was walking home from my girlfriend's house and a cop car went past me. A couple of seconds later, I heard the car turn around and they just popped out. They just all just jumped out the car. I decided to record it because I was getting stopped a lot and I didn't have evidence of a cop being disrespectful or anything, so. I have a book bag on. you talking to? You asked me why I had a book bag on. You, you asked me if I had a book bag on. Why you, come on, why are you touching me for? He was holding me, he was going through your pocket, he was going up, down, he was going through my sweater. Then that's when, that's when he told me to keep my hands on my head. So I was like this the whole time. At one point, I did want to be a cop to help people and mostly just like be able to wear a badge and, and a uniform and be proud of it. But now I feel like I'm not sure because they're not there to help people anymore. They're just there to like stop them, humiliate them, make them feel bad. Since 2002, four million New Yorkers have been stopped and frisked by police. 75% of people stopped are black or Latino. So can you guys do the math on how many millions of black and Latino people were stopped? Over 4 million New Yorkers. Like 1,000 every day. No, I mean 3 million. 3 million. Yeah. Yeah, you know me. I know you. <laughs> 3 out of 4. Right? So it's really simple. So I'm going to say a word. There's no wrong answer. It's the first image or thing that you think of. It can be a verb. It can be an noun. It can be an anything. Okay. 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 Okay, cop. Uh, what? Block. Block. Blocking? I don't know. Q. What comes into your head? <laughs> Frisk. Home. I live in Breakfast Iverson. And it's like each and every day, young men get stopped. Um, one of them is my brother. Sometimes like, he gets stopped for no reason. It's like sometimes he don't have his ID, or if his pants is sagging, they'll stop him. Or just, just to stop him, just, I guess, to earn credits or whatever. Once, like last week, um, it was like around 8 o'clock. My brother and his friends were just walking or oh, whatever, and my brother had his hoodie on. So um, the cops, they rolled past them. When they got to the corner, they jumped out and was like, oh, what are y'all going? What y'all doing? I had this captain who walked into the precinct and gave a speech about harassing the public. His words were, we're gonna go out there and we're gonna violate some rights. We hear it from the captain down. We want 250s. This is stop, question, and frisk. Oh, you again, man. Oh, I just got stopped like two blocks you know ago, yo. You look very suspicious. Cause y'all always looking Listen. at me crazy. So, what is the stop and frisk policy for you? What do you think about it? Um, it's unfair. Why? Because you get stopped for no reason by cops. Because they think you're doing something wrong, but you're not. Anybody else got something to say? Um, I also think it was unfair. I, like, I think the stop and frisk policy, it's not completely bad. I just think the people that use it are abusing the power of it. But um, I think it was a good idea when it was uh, made up, but it's not so much anymore. People took advantage of it. What about you, Anna? What do you think about it? <laughs> um, I think it's racist because they just stop black and not people. The first time I probably got stopped, I was probably like 15, I would say. And it was just me and my group, me and the group of friends walking to the store and the police had pulled us over. They had said that it was a crime in the area. And they basically just went to search us and take our names and everything. Normally, if I'm by myself, I'm fine. I've never been stopped by myself. But when I'm with a group of people, they normally target, you know, like a group of people instead of like individuals, I say. So how many times has that happened to you? I say I've been stopped probably like four times throughout my life. 
Nine out of ten people stopped were innocent of any wrongdoing. Action! The color of my skin is not a crime. What is your definition of an upstander? I would say an upstander affects the community because it's just not the person that's just there sitting there. They actually take, like, they actually want to make a difference and they actually, like, want to put their two cents into what's going on and to help what's going on rather than just sitting on their butt behind. So if we put together Justin, Alvin, and the rest of us sensitive to the idea that the police must follow rules and must give people respect and not treat everyone like they are suspects. How does that work in your heart? Why well, so? Why do you? Why is your voice joining Alvin's voice? I think they would just like if you go to a neighborhood that like no one has seen you, the cops never seen you, but they definitely won't stop. But so why? No, you so like you go to a different neighborhood that's not yours, like the cops are obviously gonna stop you be like, Why are you here for? Like, this is not your you know this you don't even belong here. That's what they're gonna say. Like, go back to where you came from and go back to other neighborhoods that belong to you. Just because of your skin color, they're gonna be like, What are you here for? Around the United States, because in Arizona out uh, there have a law that you can stop Mexicans or any race when you ask for the paper. So I think they they learned it for the government. Oh, there's a law like that. It's basically racist. So I think that people should just protest, like, and like how we did at Wall Street. How does Alvin's actions define him? Um, I would say like define him like as a very responsible person. He tried to put it into something he thought was wrong, and he took responsibility by actually recording the police. I think that's brave. I think that um, Alvin. It just shows that he's, like Davon said, that he's brave and that he's really strong and committed because at the end of the day, it's like, he, he didn't have to do any he didn't have to do anything. He could have just kept, I mean, keep, like, getting harassed and everything but like that, but he actually made a difference. Like, he, he wanted to change what was going on. Go out to a wider frame, yeah. Let's go out to a wider frame. Um, it's recording. Yeah, it's recording. Yeah, it's recording. It's recording. I know that Stop and Frisk was serious, but I didn't know it was that serious until so I started watching the videos and seeing how people reacting, such as um, young black teens and young Latino boys or whatever. So it kind of gave me a recap on it. And doing this video and interview is like a good opportunity because as a young teen myself, um, people will actually listen to me. Everyone's recording? Action. So, what was the question, Chang? Like, how can you change it in the future? Well, I just think that you could change, have a change by having different documentaries to explain how one stop and fist could be good and how stop and fist could be bad too. We actually sit down, discuss, and feed off of each other's ideas. Like, say I might have an opinion, and then that might get somebody else to think of something better, like, you know, and make a better idea. In Alvin, for example, it went viral because I saw it on Facebook last time, and then the next day I went back to class, and we were talking about the same thing about Alvin and his incident. And from there, I think making videos, doing, like, doing different documentaries, like, stuff like that. It is possible for us to open up our minds.